Hey guys, welcome back to another one. So let's have a look at number five. So figure two shows part of a graph of equation y equals fx. And if you see it guys, we can see the fx is in terms of mods, okay? So before we finish the rest of this, how about we go ahead and label this graph and just see where it hits on the y-axis and what this point is here. Well, I can tell you straight away. If you look at this carefully, it says that the graph has shifted by plus three. Now this means that it's gone up by three. So this means that the lowest point here must be three okay secondly another way to find out what this sort of turning point is a sharp turning point is actually the solution of the mod so you go think of it as like one of those bracket problems you got five minus x in this case x would have to be five because you put five here you're going to get zero and two times zero gives you three which is y so x must be five okay now secondly another point to consider is the one over here from the downward slope now to work out this point, notice how it cuts the y-axis. So if something, like, if something cuts the y-axis, this means that the y coordinate fx must be zero. And because this is going in a downward slope, we know that the gradient is negative. So in fact, minus x is the gradient. So in fact, this equation as it is, is cool. So we can say, okay, when y equals zero, we have zero equals two times five minus x plus three. And then expanding this and solving it carefully, you realize that you're going to get x equals 13. And that's exactly where it hits. So now that's done. And oh yeah, by the way, this side is obviously an, um, upwards, an upward slope. So yeah, since that's done, let's go ahead and look at part A. So it tells us to state the set of possible value to k, knowing that the function fx equals k. When it says fx equals k, it means literally a straight line cut in the waxes. Okay, that's literally just a straight line cutting the y-axis. It could be anywhere. It could be, say, fx equals 2, and it would be a straight line. Now, this one we know has exactly one root. So this means the only place where it could put potentially hit, um, hit a single place would be firstly at 3, like if you did a straight line here. You could hit this exactly at one point. Or any point above 13, because if you look carefully, you can hit here, or here, and so on. If you hit anywhere between 13 and 3, it's going to be 2 points. So you can say that the set of possible values of k could be at k equals 3, or when k is bigger than 13. That's it. Okay, not bad. Now, next one. Solve the equation fx when it's set to half x plus 10. Now, these kind of questions are very important to understand. Um, you have two equations, yeah? One line going down and one line going up, described by this equation. What this means is that for the downward slope, we have a negative gradient. So we have 5 minus x. Remember, it's the, there has to be a minus sign from the, in front of the x. And because this is an upward slope, this means that the gradient is positive. So we have to rewrite this as x minus 5. This would be for the, for the positive equation. So essentially, you have these two equations equal to this equation, and it looks a bit like this. So the downward slope looks like that, equal to the fx function, which is from here. An upward slope, you just swap it around to make it x positive and just literally just rotate it, as you see, and um, equate it to the second function. And now all you have to do is literally expand, solve it, and then you get your you get your two solutions. So let's do it step by step. So expanding this, we should get 10 minus 2x plus 3 equals half x plus 10. Collecting, um, putting all the x's on the left side and the numbers on the right. Actually, you can just cancel out 10 right now. You're going to have firstly minus half x, so you're going to get um, minus 2.5x equals minus 3. And then dividing these from each other, dividing minus 2.5 across, it should get x equals, um, on my calculator, 1.2. Okay, and just repeat the same for the second. Expand the bracket, you get 2x minus 10, guys. Add 3 equals half x plus 10. Okay, and then collecting, you know, move all the x's to the left and the numbers to the right. So in other words, add 10 across a minus 3 and subtract half x. You should get 1.5x here. You should get add 10, which is 20, subtract 3, and you get um, 17. This means x equals, when you divide by 1.5, 17 divided by 1.5 gave me 34 over 3. And yeah, this is the same as uh, 605. Okay, part C. So, what do we have? So, the graph of equation y equals fx is transformed onto the graph of equation y equals 4 times the function with x minus 1 inside. 
and the vertex in the graph of equation 4 in the same thing has a as coordinates p and q this is talking about the vertex as in here so this is the vertex p q but of course it's going we need to find it for the new graph state the value of p and the value of q okay this is just transformations so quick thing to note when you've got a number it's times in the function this means that the y coordinates have been scaled by 4 so we've got times all these y coordinates by 4 so for example 13 times 4 becomes 26 52 and 3 times 4 becomes 12 of course x values don't change because this is this well, it just doesn't change and when you got when you work inside the bracket when it says x minus 1 think of it as a solution when you solve it you get x equals plus 1 so this means you shift the the x values by plus 1 so this means this 5 becomes 6 so it moves to the right by 1 this means this corner here which is like 0 13 is now uh, 1 13 so it's moved to the right like here 1 so literally everything just shifts here and then you just draw the same shape back and then upwards so yeah remember to use a ruler guys yeah and that's it <laughs> yeah so that's my clock so yeah that becomes uh, 52 here this coordinate here is uh, 152 um, this one here is 12 and this one here is 6 and that's it so this means this vertex here is going to be 6 12 so the value of p is um, 6 and the value q is 12.